Now let's take a look at Q Learning and see how it can be used to play these uh, gymnasium games that I showed you in the previous video. So I have this running in Colab. I'm going to go ahead and run this just so that it detects that we are actually in Colab. And there's some background stuff that we need to install just so that we have access to all the appropriate libraries. And I have the correct commands here to install this into Colab. And we appear to be ready. So Q Learning. Some important concepts here is you will have an agent, that is your player in the game, essentially, and then the environment, that's the screen or just the world that that agent is operating in. Actions are things that it can do, like move up, down, left, right, fire, things like that. Episode is one individual frame that you're looking at, and then, or even a, a series of. And then the terminal state is once the game's over, either won or lost. So we're going to look at Mountain Car. First of all, we've seen Mountain Car in previous videos. I'm going to go ahead and run this code here that just gives us an image from it. So the idea of Mountain Car is there's this underpowered car. So if you just push the gas pedal, you can push the gas pedal in this direction or in this direction. So it's 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 got it can go forward, it can go backwards, or you can press zero and that applies no force to it whatsoever. So if you move forward, it'll it'll chug along and try to go up the hill and fail. It just does not have enough power. What it needs to do is go up this hill, get a running start, use some of that momentum, and see its way through. But these are your actions, 0, 1, and 2. Apply force, don't apply force. And just because you quit applying force, it's still moving. It's still, it's still rolling. And we have two state values. We know the position, so the x coordinate here. And then the velocity. How fast is it moving? and in a positive or negative direction. So this code here will create the display, it'll run it, and when we're in the main loop, you'll see that we're simply trying to scale the hill by just, just flooring the gas pedal. We'll see what this actually does. I'm running it, and it's just gonna go through this loop and just kind of floor it. You can see it going through all of the the state's there, and then when we run it, it just chugs along, it tries to go up, it's, it's just not strong enough. Once it starts to lose traction, then it, it falls back down. I'm going to write some program code for this. So I am going to use a programming solution. Whatever direction the car is currently rolling in, that's the direction I'm going to apply the gas. And I'll go ahead and run this so that it renders. But you can see my little bit of logic here as I check to see the state. If the state is positive, meaning it's going in one direction, I'm going to apply two, otherwise I'll apply zero. So I'm just going to reinforce whatever direction it's, it's going. And this turns out to be a pretty effective strategy. You'll see here, it does, it does hit the end, and what happens when I run it? Tries to go up, gain some momentum, and boom, it makes it. So we win. So I'm just showing that it's a pretty simple procedure. I can just write something. What's the fun in that? Let's use AI to figure it out. So we're going to use reinforcement learning. I have a diagram, and then I have a equation here. And we'll go through both of these. I realize the equation looks pretty big, but it's there's not too much really going on there. Here you have the agent, and the agent is constantly taking an action on the environment. As a result of that, the state changes, and then the agent is made aware of that, so it can take our, its next action. And then also sometimes a reward is given to the agent. These are the two inputs to let it know really what it should do. There's several values here. There's the learning rate, very important. That should be zero to one. That controls how quickly it's going to learn. The more, the slower you learn, the longer it's going to take. The faster you run, it might jump over an optimal solution and never converge to anything. We have a lookup table, the Q table. We'll see the Q table towards the end, but it is dealing with every possible state that that car can be in. And there's two different state variables. There's how fast it's going, and then there's also the position. These are also continuous values, so the continuous values need to be made discrete. So we, we, we create bands. We create 10 bands for each of these, and then we have a table that is 10 by 10. 
So for what you, you find the band, the greater than less than, that the velocity and the position are both in, you look at what square they, they intersect, and then there's a probability that each of those three actions that you have is the best one for at that point. So you really have sort of a three-dimensional box of options. You've got, you've got all of the options, all of the actions that you can take, and then the depth is the different, um, so it's sort of a cube because you have the state and those are your X and Y axis. And then the Z is the different actions that you can take. So S is the current state, the reward, and then the action that it will perform. So let's look at some of what is really going on here. You're assigning the new state to be First of all, just the old state plus the learning rate with the reward added to the discount factor. The discount factor is looking at how much of this, this optimal future value. So where can we actually ultimately get to as far as rewards? How much of that do we want to actually consider? And then we also subtract out the old value. And then we implement it basically in, in code. I'll go ahead and run this so that it gets defined. I am going to run this part as well. Create the mountain car. And then we'll actually begin the, the training process for it. Code basically implements that formula. You can see that I, I calculate the discrete state. That figures out which of the 10 bands each of the two state values gets put into. And then as we go through like a lot of different of these game type algorithms, we're deciding if we want to exploit or explore. We get a random number and Epsilon is basically telling us how likely we are to simply just pick a random value. And if if it's if it's below epsilon, then we're going to exploit. We are going to pick an action based on what we've already learned. We're going to pick the maximum Q value and whatever it corresponds to, that's the action that we're going to perform. Otherwise, we're going to just pick a random action and that causes us to explore more. We take the step and then we, we, we calculate, we turn, change it into uh, the, the new discrete state. And we just determine if we've if we've reached if we've reached the goal. Otherwise, we update the two, the Q value. We recalculate the maximum value, look at the current one, apply basically the learning rate and and everything else, so that we are able to update that based on that maximum anticipated state. And let's see. We already ran through all of this. It looks like it did get to a good state. I can now run and watch the Q table that we've created for it actually go. It doesn't always get to an optimal value, but let's see what happens. It does look, it looks promising and yeah, it makes it. So it learned how to, how, how to apply the accelerator and get, get to that good value. And if we look at the Q table, you can see the different locations where it learned to apply no gas versus gas in each of the, the directions. Thank you for watching the video, and if this was useful, get, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel so you see the rest of the videos here.